When an old foe from the Titans' past returns, are they possibly tied to the murder of one of the team's own? Well, let's hop into the pages of Titans issue number two and find out together, shall we? So then, as we join this brand new book, we're actually treated to a fun little flashback. We see the Teen Titans team early on in their career clashing with one of their oldest foes, the Church of Blood. Only to the Super Kid's disappointment by the time they bust on into Church HQ, they have already been beaten and routed by the Justice League. Some of the others ask Team leader Dick if he thinks that they'll ever be as good as the Justice League when they grow up, only for the young Robin to say, no, we're gonna be better. Now, picking up from where the last issue left off, the Titans team had finally moved into their brand new Bloodhaven HQ, only to find the body of Wally West the Flash waiting for them. Obviously, the team is positively mortified that one of their own could be killed like this, but here's the thing, once they start looking around and try and get in contact with Linda, Wally's wife, the Flash actually shocks them all by sauntering on in like nothing happened, and that's because, well, Wally isn't dead. Not yet, anyway, but to properly explain this, the team needs to do a lot of hardcore forensic work. They go over the dead Wally's body with a fine-tooth comb and figure that he's not from any multiverse. He's not a robot or a shapeshifter or an alien or something magical. No, this is definitely Wally West. It's just a dead Wally West from the future, meaning that before he was murdered, he traveled back in time. Figuring that his friends and teammates on the Titans had the best chance at actually solving this murder that has yet to happen. Of course, a hero's work is never done, and the group isn't actually able to focus on this problem for too long when they end up hearing about another. There's a massive forest fire taking place in Borneo, which is now actually the second natural disaster in so many days that the Titans have been called upon to deal with. The whole thing is getting really fishy. Dick dispatches the team to deal with the problem. He even makes Donna Troy acting lead as he and the Flash are sticking behind. Why? Well, because Wally's suit reeked of smoke and had wood particulates in it. Implying that maybe, just maybe, the shot that rang out and killed him did so during the chaos of a forest fire. Now, obviously, Beast Boy takes the whole forest fire thing harder than just about anyone else. After all, he's been half of the animals in this forest right now, and their pain is truly palpable to him. Donna was actually a little surprised to be thrust into the role of the leader, but she actually does an amazing job in rising to the occasion using a nearby dam and Cyborg's own boom tube technology, they manage to route a bunch of water right where it needs to be to put out the fire. Still, though, all of this is incredibly suspicious. At first, the team thinks the culprits could be a group of off-the-books clear-cutters, but it's made apparent that they don't actually have the means to cause a fire on this scale. Which is honestly pretty lucky for them, considering an enraged Beast Boy almost went full feral and ripped their throats out for even just being suspect. It's Vic who actually manages to get to the bottom of things. He gives the old CSI scan to the area and realizes that the spark that set off this fire was alien in origin, but not just any alien, Tamaranian. Meaning that whoever started this forest fire is part of the same alien race as Starfire. And hey, speaking of Starfire, and I was, this issue, much like the previous one, actually does an excellent job balancing the personal soap opera of the members of the Titans team, as well as the superhero stuff. You see, Donna actually jumps to the the conclusion that Cory might actually be mad at her considering that she got passed over to lead the Borneo mission. And I mean, yeah, if Dick is picking team leaders, he probably would pick someone like Starfire. She has essentially been his right-hand woman and more for years. But thankfully, Cory actually takes the thing with humor and maturity. She says that, hey, you know what? She would happily follow Donna into the field anytime. She rose to the occasion. She was smart. She was tactical. But more than anything, Starfire is happy that she actually cared about her feelings and was willing to talk, proving that they're leaving the petty squabbles of the Teen Titans behind and being full-grown adults now. Now, on top of stopping natural disasters and solving murders, the team is also still moving all their stuff into their brand new base of operations. Of course, Beast Boy had to set up the big TV first, and it's while watching it they end up coming across a nighttime show that just so happens to be interviewing a man calling himself the brand new Brother Blood. Yes, that's right, the Church of Blood, like so many other religions before it has undergone a major rebranding effort. Now they call themselves the Church of Eternity and their mission statement has completely changed. Now instead of being a blood-themed death cult, they're now a group that claims to be invested in the survival of humanity as a species and because Earth is basically screwed due to natural disasters that I'm sure they're not actively behind, the Church of Eternity and their brand new fresh-faced young leader, Brother Eternity, is actively taking their 
followers money so they can plan to go to space. And yet, still somehow, they're not the craziest cult in the DC universe. The nighttime host is quick to say, how is anyone supposed to trust the church given its long history of supervillainy? And well, wouldn't you know it, Brother Eternity has the perfect answer for that too. He says that to help clean up the group's image and to make amends for their past sins, they've actively reached out to a brand new member, a former teen hero himself, Tempest, Prince of the Seas. Yes, that's right. This is the new mentor that he was talking about. And why he opted to blow off the Titans, because he has effectively joined a cult. Hey, say what you want about the Church of Eternity, but they learned the lesson that Scientology learned, and that is having some good celebrity rec recognition and promotion sure does go a long way. And so that was Titans issue number two, everybody. And once again, I think Tom Taylor is actually doing a great job with this brand new series. I like so far these first two issues have tied into a bigger story, but have also felt like nice one and dones. I've always loved Brother Blood and the Church of Blood as concepts, and to see them reworked here as a kind of New Age Scientology is a fun, clever premise. More than anything, though, I think what this series actually really manages to pull off is balance, something a lot of team books don't do. We have a murder mystery with The Flash, a mystery involving all the natural disasters, Tempest seemingly betraying his old team and friends to join a cult. It's all good stuff. It's good plates that are being spun, and maybe they're all related maybe they're not. But no matter what, what I know is that for two issues running, Tom Taylor has been sure to actually slow things down for a little bit and actually let us really, you know, drink in the whole interpersonal dynamics that make the Titans so special. They're a team like the Justice League or any other super team, but moreover than that, they're a family. They live together, they work together, they play together, they love each other. Some of the very best Titans material comes from this well, and it's something that I think has been ignored in the last several runs, so it's nice to see Tom Taylor run in full steam ahead with it. Overall, I'd give this one another very positive 8 out of 10. Hey there everyone, it's your pal Kate Joel again, and if you're seeing my face right now, that means you watched at the end of the video, and I'll always be grateful for that. Retention helps in this crazy YouTube game, and so does becoming a patron. If you head on down to the description, you can find a link to my Patreon page. Recently just redid all the tiers, a lot of cool stuff offering up there, exclusive commentaries, exclusive polls, uh, behind the scenes concept art for Capes and Quest, that's the brand new D&D show I've started soon. Never been a better time to become a patron. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month and help the channel grow and you know help me continue to deliver content like what you just saw so i want to thank you all and i will see you again next time bye bye